Everybody say, my hallelujah belongs to shout hallelujah come on shout hallelujah come on shout hallelujah thank you hallelujah 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 Testing.
hallelujah, hallelujah. Just praise him, hallelujah. Can you just wave your hand? Hallelujah, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. set my feet on straight street and gave me the strength to fight he's done great things he's done great things he's doing great things he is doing great things for us somebody say right now Woo. wow thank you god bless you maybe you're dismissed in jesus name i was you know you know my story, amen. Children's Church is now in progress. Those who are parents and guardians, certainly you can uh, uh, accompany your child to Children's Church. They got a special today going on, amen. It's the uh, Father's Day special, amen. Uh, pizza, day, pizza day today, amen. Children's Church, amen. And the fathers, if you want some pizza, you may, you may go to the appropriate restaurant and get some. All right. My story simply is this, when I was younger, uh, you know my story, I did not, I did not, uh, I was not a fighter. I was, even though I was raised in the hood, I was not a fighter. I was a runner. I could run. And, and it's important to understand, be able to run, you know, so I was smarter enough to know, like, to fight, but I can run. Amen. But as I got in Christ, I understood some principles in Christ. Amen. The song we sang years ago, it beat the devil running, and I'm so glad. Remember that song? Well, I, that didn't work in terms of, <laughs> amen. So I had to fight evangelists. I had to fight, amen. I had to fight the good fight of faith, and certainly the Lord has been faithful, amen, amen. If you don't know how to fight, amen, I want you to know our weapons are not carnal, amen. That ain't, that, that's not going to work, amen. I'm just coming this morning, and I heard on the NPR that there were about eight mass shootings or last, just last night alone. Amen. Various parts of the country. Amen. Folks that's acting crazy. Amen. But what we really need is certainly, amen, is the word of God. We fight with the word. We fight with the spirit. Amen. We go forth. Amen. I will pray that we as a body of believers we can understand the power and the potency of God's eternal word and his will in our lives. Thank God for our consecration on this past week. Amen. Thank you so very much for the fasting and prayer that's going forth. Amen. That has gone forth, and certainly it does make a difference in all of our lives individually and certainly uh, collectively. We continue to pray for Evangelist Mabry and family in the past. And Deacon uh, Mabry, wonderful service on yesterday, going to home service. Thank God for them. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to figure out. I see these these sisters got hats on. What's what's the occasion? Uh, they told me they were they told me that on Mother's Day and Father's Day the sisters. Were, this group of individuals, rather, uh, I can't say <laughs> they wear hats. So this is the hat. This is the hat. Must be Father's Day. Amen. They got the hats on. I, I don't know. One of one of the one of the one of the mothers said to one of the sisters who were wearing a hat, said, "What's what's up with that today? Is it somebody you coming to see today? Is it somebody want to see you today?" <laughs> I'm not gonna call the person's name out, but they work in the fifth store. Amen. <laughs> And, and they and they have a white hat on, so that must be. And they're on the second, and they're on the and they're on the second row. Okay, so I, I let, amen. Or, and it's not Mabry either. Okay, <laughs> amen. But we thank God, amen, for what God has done. So glad for, amen. I want to honor our fathers this morning again, sisters. On last week, wow, amen. Fathers, fathers, fathers. Oh my. Oh my. They're standing for the fathers. Amen. This Jeff. Amen. All right. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you. Thank you, sisters. Amen. We as fathers, we as men, we as certainly appreciate your support. Amen. And your prayers. Amen. It's certainly a blessing. The Bible says in the Corinthians, he says, you may have uh, 10,000 instructors, but you have not, we have, oh, we have not many fathers. 
Amen. You have not many fathers. And I pray my prayer even this morning as I was scanning, amen, our congregation in prayer and yesteryear. Amen. I'm going to make it my business, amen, certainly to uh, invest not only in our younger brothers, but certainly in our older brothers. Uh, Deacon Mabry is gone, amen, this year. Amen. Deacon uh, Brother Trim Dixon, he, he was the eldest. He went last year, amen. And, and so, amen, we've got to be able to invest and sit at the feet of wise men and individuals who can give us some information, some information and certainly some inspiration and some wisdom and knowledge. So glad, so grateful. Amen. So brothers and amen, be not just father in name only. Amen. But certainly lead your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, uh, all. Lead them. Amen. Be a, a, an example. Amen. In the body, in the body of Christ. I looked over to my, my right, your left. Amen. I see my relatives all the way from somewhere. Is it Washington? Where y'all from? California. California. I, 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 I good. Amen. The Stevens family. The Stevens family. Amen. The Stevens family. And, uh, Ronnie and the entire family. And then, of course, Sister Rachel. She's here all the time. Amen. Norman make her, makes, her, makes her run. And uh, Barbara Jean, I, I shared with my, 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 my cousin that, you know, your mother always made a pineapple upside down cake. And, and Rachel just happened to always come during Angie's birth time, birthday. Amen. But the last cake she made, she made especially for Rachel. I gave, she came from, she came from New York to get this cake. Uh, so, <laughs> and she's appreciative. She is certainly is appreciative. Glad to have them and certainly all of our visitors here this very morning. Thank you for being here in the sanctuary in the house of the Lord. The Lord is great and is greatly to be praised. We give him the glory and the honor. And the praise. I just can't help but think, if you turn to Psalms 130, 133 and also the book of Hebrews, chapter number 13, I just can't help but think about, in retrospect, amen, uh, the fathers of this particular assembly, amen, uh, the Honorable um, Pastor Small and also District Elder John Brooks, amen, amen. We're blessed in this church. Uh, we'll be not, we're be. 100 years and maybe three years, or four years, something like that. And we're blessed to have only three pastors in all that time period. Man, that's, that, that's a blessing. That is a blessing. That's a blessing, and we appreciate what, what they have laid a ground groundwork for us. Amen. They have shared the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Amen. I know there have been challenges. We talked about yesterday at the services, how from the old church to this church, and how those individuals labored, they labored, they sweat equity, they, they sacrificed, amen, they did those kind of things, stove in the, around, they did all those kind of things. Now we have the privilege, amen, of being in a, a new edifice, amen, air condition comes on and goes off, amen, nice, nice uh, chairs and everything. But we really want, we want the presence of God to be with us. Amen, we want the presence of God to be with us. And we want individuals to be saved. I mean, born again of the water and the spirit. We want individuals to know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and certainly the life. So, amen. Thank God for those men who have shared, not just the men, obviously, but also the women who have shared over the course of these many years. And to God be the glory for the things he has and is doing. So glad to see Sister Polly, amen, had heart issues, a heart surgery a procedure, and she's in the sanctuary today. Amen. Grateful. And thankful for the Lord bringing her through in Jesus' name. Familiar passage of Scripture, Psalms 133. The psalmist takes a little time to make this proclamation. Amen. Behold, verse 1, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He concludes that with an exclamation mark. It says, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. 
Hebrews 13 is a very familiar scripture, verse number one. Uh, the writer takes a little time to give a, a, a pinpoint view that I think it's important for us as members of the body of Christ to make this statement. He says, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The setting is very clear in the aspect of what the writer of Psalms, the psalmist writes. And he talks about, amen, how awesome it is, amen, for uh, us as individuals to dwell together in unity. Uh, it is a true statement. It is a true statement where we are, amen, that unity is powerful. Unity is powerful, and it is the adversary's desire, amen, to infiltrate, amen, and to destroy unity among the brethren. He tries his best, and, and then the Bible talks about, the Lord makes a statement in Matthew and Mark's writings. He says that a house divided against itself, a city, amen, divided against itself, a group divided against itself cannot Stand. It is impossible. It is absolutely impossible. And one of the things we have to consider, even in this country that we live in right now, there is a divisive mindset that's going forth. Division is 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 messing up the messing up our country. Amen. And and I believe that it's important for division to be pushed away because the enemy is behind division. It is it is the force of darkness that is divide, that is behind division. Every kingdom that, uh, that does not work together cannot possibly stand. And the commentators have talked about that in this 30, 133rd Psalm, uh, David, who is now a king, a king of Israel, and the background simply says that prior to him becoming king of entire Israel, amen, you know, he had to deal with Saul. Saul tried to kill him, tried to destroy his life on numerous occasions. Finally, after Saul has now died and been killed, or kills himself rather, the Bible says that they put another king there in uh, Saul's place, Saul's son. And, and while he's there, David, on the other hand, takes approximately... Uh, um, I guess, portion of the children of Israel or the tribes, and they have a divided nation now, and they go back and they go forth. And finally, after much, after about seven years, the Bible says that they finally come together. And David is so, oh, so appreciative of being on one accord in one unity aspect. The Bible says that David begins to pin these words. He says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He appreciated that the division that once existed no longer existed. And after the X number of years, now David, David is now king over the entire Israel state. And he, he gets upon the so I used, gets upon the platform and, and gives his inaugural address to everyone who's there. And he says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. You can be together but not be unified. Come on, can I get a witness? This is, this is a truism that we live in. You can have a whole cluster of individuals and not be unified. In the sports arena, they talk about the 12th, the 12th uh, man on the field, amen. But in the midst of the 12th man on the field, there is always some opponents, amen, sitting in the stands, amen. If you happen to be an Eagles fan, there will probably be some Dallas Cowboy fans sitting in the stands and wearing their uniform. There are maybe... 40,000 people there, but there are a few hundred Dallas folk in the stands. And while they're cheering for the Eagles fans, go the Dallas fans say, mm. they, They're not going to boo because they knew if they, if they boo, the city of brotherly love would create a problem. So they just sit there, amen. If their team gets a point, they think, Yeah, okay, okay. But that's, that's you're there, but you're not together. 
Sisters and brothers, it's extremely important that the body of Christ be together. Amen. I had an individual yes, on yesterday, yes, yesterday, yesterday, an individual came yesterday, just walked through the store doing the, doing the church, through the repast, and he sat there and, and came to the repast, and he stood outside, and I, I got a chance to talk to him. I said, his name, his name was Bill. I'm Bill, how you doing, Bill? And uh, we were talking, he said, I've seen all these cards outside of the church. And I live in Garden Lake, and uh, I want to know what's going on. And he just walked right in. Let's say, amen, security. He just walked right in. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and he and I were conversing, and, and, and he says, what kind of church is this? I said, we're Pentecostal Apostolic Church. He said, oh, okay. And, and then he said, what's that? Great, great, great response. And I begin to share with him. He says, oh, it, you know, I, I know a little bit about, um, uh, what's, it, I know about Methodist and I know about Baptist. And I know about Presbyterian. He was going, and I know about some other forms of religion as he goes into it. He says, hmm. He said, do, do you mind if I come to church? I said, Sh Please, by all means, come on. He said, listen, I, I, I don't have to be dressed up, do I? I have to have a tie. I, I said, no, sir, you don't have to have a tie on. Just come on. Amen. But I realized that in our community, people can be in your community and not know that you're here. They don't know. They may not know you're here. Now, thank God, we know we're here. But the word on the street is, is this the church that Oprah built? Did Oprah do this church? And we tell them, oh, oh, of course not, you know, respectfully, no, no, no. My point is, we can't, people can't see this as being a church that Oprah was involved in. We've got to see that this is the church of the living God. I shared with Oprah at one of the repasses before many years ago. She, I told her, Oprah, the word in the street is that this is, this is the, your church. You, you did this church. She stopped eating, looked at me straight in the face. She said, uh, I guess that's good, huh? I, listen, ain't a bad thing. I got, I got no problem with it. The point is, we have to represent Christ. And so the psalmist says, unity is like uh, the oil, the precious oil that was poured upon Aaron's head. They, they took the time in, in, in Numbers and Exodus, rather, and they had a special oil, not like just the oil we have right now, olive oil, but it was a special blending. And the, the oil was so dynamic, it gave a scent. So you knew when someone was, in this case, you knew when the priest was anointed. You knew he was anointed because of the smell, the aroma, the fragrance that was given. They knew this was Aaron and this was Aaron's group of the Levites. Sisters and brothers, I would to say us, even this very morning, there ought to be an aroma in our lives. I like what the writer says in um, 1 Corinthians 13 chapter talks about love and the power and the potency of love. He makes it very clear that you may have the ability to speak in a multitude of tongues. You have the ability to have this and have that and give your body to be burned. But if you don't have love, it profit us nothing. And so, so we're on an assignment. We're on a mission. We're on a, 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 an issue that we must make sure. I don't mean CGC. I mean we as the body of Christ and the body of believers, we must let people see the importance of being unified and coming together. 
He goes further and said, it's not just like the garments that went down, uh, the oil down his beard and to the, to the garments, but it's also it's like the dew, the dew, like the dew in the morning, like the dew in the morning, like the dew in the morning. The, I, you know, I'm, again, I'm from the city, so I don't, I don't know much about them, nothing. But uh, they told me, those people who cut grass, they told me, you can't cut grass until about 10 o'clock in the morning. My question is, why? Because the grass is wet. Because of the dew in the morning, it's wet. So, and when the grass is wet, it clogs up. And it causes some issues and messes with the lawnmower. There's a dew. There's a spiritual dew that God will give unto us. That will give unto you. That will cause you to see how great he really is. Others will see your, your God is greater, your God is wonderful, your God is magnificent. And so he simply makes this statement in Hebrews, let brotherly love continue. Tell somebody, let it keep, keep it going on. Keep it, keep it going, keep it going on. The world around us needs to see, amen, the love of God. The world around us needs to feel the power of God. The world around us will look at us and see that we are in, we're connected one with another. Oh, I would agree to any one of us, amen, that there are times in our lives we don't always see eye to eye. But somehow, some way, the Lord shows and ministers into our lives to believe, to understand that the enemy tries to divide. The enemy tries to separate, tries to cause a division of the house. But I am so grateful this very morning. I'm so thankful this very morning that it is in him, Christ, we live, move, and have our very being. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful to be connected not just with you and me, but I'm connected with God. Because if I'm connected without him, if I'm connected with him, I know that I can go forth. For the Bible says without me, that's him, we can do nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. We can be, we can be educated, but we can do nothing without Christ. We need Christ in everything we do. It is the little children, the little toddlers, as they uh, were birthed into this world, they became dependent upon their, their parents or their guardians and, and to feed them and to change them and to take care of them and do all those things. But as the child got older, the child now says, I can do it. I, can, I know, I know. And the child didn't know a thing, but the th child thought they knew. Sometimes when we don't watch out in spiritual, in, in, our, in our walk with Christ, we say, I got this. And we, oh, I can do this. Listen, we can do nothing without him. We can do absolutely nothing to be separated from him. Become like a branch that is withered and causes separated from the tree. But I'm so grateful this very morning. I'm grateful this morning. I'm grateful this morning that we are unified. I'm grateful this morning, those who are watching via Zoom, Facebook Live, I'm grateful this morning that there is a connection that we have, a connection with Christ, a connection with Christ that allows me, allows, allows you, allows us to see the mighty power and the working of God. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Momentarily, the author worker is going to come forth. And you'll be given an opportunity to connect with the right power source. These women, these men who are coming up, they may be altar workers, but in actuality, it is through Christ
that it allows them to pray for you and to pray for one another. Healing in the body, healing in the mind. Salvation to be born again of the water and the spirit. To know that there is no doubt that God's still on the throne. You know, we sometimes in our world, there was the, I was raised in Newark in the city, and I found out Urban Renewal, they built some awesome facilities, wonderful homes and buildings. They tore down the old ones and built some new ones up. But after a short time period, those new buildings became like the old buildings. Because they didn't teach the persons who were in the building. It was a mindset. It was a mindset not to take care of. We call it sometimes no disrespect. We, 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 sometimes we call it the welfare mentality. What that means, we just, I want, give me, give me, give me. Sisters and brothers, if you don't watch out spiritually, give me, Lord, 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 give me, give me, I want this, Lord, I want that. I'll just sit and do nothing. But the God that you and I serve simply says it doesn't work that way. I would say to you, I would say to us, that if you would just plug in, not only will you receive, but you will be a blessing to someone else as well. <laughs> By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. By the love you have one towards another. We're plugged in. Tell somebody we're, we're plugged in. And as the altar workers come right now, without hesitation, without delay, without procrastination, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This very morning, I want you, God will want you to be connected to him. We want you not just to be born again, but to know the importance of being wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus. The importance of standing on holy ground. As you're coming right now, very quickly, believing God trusting God knowing that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask to think according to the power that works in us right now he's working 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 to know that he has all power in his hand. To know that lives can be transformed, that your bodies can be healed. To know that I am connected. I'm locked arm in arm. My story but with the creator is of empty. heaven and earth. And I am available 
to you. Oh, my will. 
Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He is great and greatly to be praised. Yeah. We give him the glory and the honor for it right now in Jesus' name. God be the glory for the things he has done. Yeah. To God be the glory. Momentary, uh, uh, Pastor Larry is going to come and handle the furtherance of the services. Uh, but I'm also so grateful again for your support, again for Evangelist Mabry, man, on all the prayers and certainly the helping out of the blessing. Certainly, thank you so very much. Continue to support that family, uphold them in prayer. In Jesus' precious name, appreciate the sacrifices that you have made for that family, amen, and being connected one with another, amen. Additionally, amen, uh, those are part of the security aspect. We're having a Homeland Security meeting this upcoming Tuesday at 5.30 evening. Homeland Security is going to be here. Some, some do's and some don'ts in regards to houses of worship. I certainly would ask that you would be here at 5.30 afternoon on the coming Tuesday. The announcers are going to be also coming. Some announcers are going to be coming. So at this time, Pastor Larry is going to come. If you enjoyed that word, could you just gotta give God a hand of praise for that word this morning? If that word ministered to your spirit, just stand on your feet to give God a hand of praise for the Word of God. Out of respect for the Word. Just clap your hands for the Word of God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, we need unity. Oh, my. Tell somebody else, we need it. We need it. We need it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the moving of His Spirit. Amen. By the power of His Spirit. And while I'm standing, I want to thank on behalf of the men's ministry and all the fathers who were present last Sunday, we want to thank the women's ministry for that wonderful, delicious, scrumptious uh, brunch that they put on last Sunday. You guys knocked the ball out of the park, and we want to say thank you, thank you so very much. Fathers, put your hands together for the great job that the women's ministry, where's the president at? Where's the women's ministry president? Oh, there she is. Stand up. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And all those in the kitchen who labor behind those hot stoves, Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody got a wilted hair right now for standing over that stove. Glory to God. But we say thank you, and we are so appreciative for what the love that you showed to us on last Sunday. Praise the Lord. We are preparing ourselves to hear our announcements at this time. Uh, Sister Wise is going to come forth in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Christ Gospel Church notices and announcements for Sunday, June 18, 2018. On next Sunday, we will have our youth explosion. Come out and support our young people on next Sunday. Can you hear me now? Let's come out and celebrate also on next Sunday our graduates and retirees. Come out and support and encourage our graduates and retirees as they move on and excel in the next level. Please see Minister Rita Davis to make your payments for the Sights and Sounds trip to see Moses on August 23rd. The cost has been dropped to $150 thanks to the generosity of a supporter. Macedonia Baptist Church is having a Juneteenth celebration on tomorrow, Monday, June 19th,
from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. The donation is $10, and the flyer will be posted in the foyer area. To all of our fathers, we celebrated you on last Sunday with the brunch. Guess what, fathers? The celebration continues. So fathers, please go into the, um, the fellowship hall, thank you, for your gift bag. Just pick up your gift bag and leave. Thank you, and please keep all these notices and announcements in mind. Thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are preparing ourselves to give in the sanctuary, praise the Lord, after which we have some special Father's Day presentations that are coming up. But we are so very grateful that we are able to come together and support the kingdom of God in our giving, praise the Lord. How many know that you cannot be God giving? Praise the Lord. We used to sing that song, no matter how hard you try, the more you give, the more he'll give to you. Just keep on giving because it's really true. We, our ushers are walking up and down the aisles for those of you who need an offering envelope. Praise the Lord this morning. We just are so glad that we're able to be here this morning. We're going to ask everyone to please stand, praise the Lord, and as we prepare ourselves to give in the sanctuary, amen. If you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand real high. Someone will assist you, will give you what you need, praise the Lord. We ask you to hold your offering envelope in the air or whatever means of giving you're going to be giving by. Do we have Cash App, Givelify? You can write a check, praise the Lord, credit card, amen. Someone will assist you. But Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to give back into the kingdom of God. You are the great provider, amen. You are the one who keeps us together in unity, oh God. We praise you for all your bountiful blessings that you have bestowed upon us, oh God, not just physically but spiritually and mentally, oh God. You have touched our bodies. You have healed us. You saved us. You delivered us, oh God. And we want to get back into your kingdom to support the kingdom of God and the tearing down of darkness, bringing others into this marvelous light. We praise your name. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Remain standing and obey your ushers from the rear. Praise the Lord. in my spirit. Uh, how many know individuals in nursing homes or nursing facilities? Raise your hand. I'll say it again. How many know individuals who are in nursing facilities, nursing homes, convalescent centers? All right. Would you do yourself a favor? The Lord spoke to me this, this morning. He, he 
wants you and I to reach out to them expeditiously, quickly, quickly. Whether you call them on the phone or whether you be there in person, it's important. This is, this is important. This is very important. Amen. Because we are unified. We don't want to forget individuals who are in facilities. We don't want to forget them. We don't want to forget them. Make some time this week to do that. Amen. And watch it be a blessing to them and to you as well. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. At this time, uh, Brother Darnell is going to come forward and he has some presentations to do at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> praise the Lord, everybody. Can we just give Jesus a praise real quick in this atmosphere? Isn't he so worthy on this Father's Day? Well, I've been tasked by the Shepherd's Ministry about 20 minutes ago to come up and give some presentations. <laughs> they're, they're not in here, so I can talk about them. But, but we've come to give presentations to our bishop this Father's Day. Amen. And so while I'm speaking, I'm just going to ask all ministries who have come to give presentations this morning, if you can make your way to the stage now. Um, but as you're making your way, oh, I'm, Wanda, oh, I'm Wanda, you are in here. Um, as you're making your way, I'm just going to say a couple of words about our fathers this morning. Um, and as I was thinking for the last 20 minutes, um, for some words to say, um, I jotted down a few notes. <laughs> and so, you know, we are, we are accustomed to, you know, understanding and, and, and experiencing um, a father's strength, um, a father's protection. Um, but this morning, I'm just going to talk about a father's love for a couple of minutes. It is just so, it's so wonderful um, when you can have your father figure, your father express love to you, say that I'm proud of you, encouraging you. Uh, it's something about that special thing. It's something different. Of course, you know, I say I'm proud of my friends all the time. I'm proud of my mother. You can say all of that, but it's something when your father says, I'm proud of you. I love you. It's just a something, something special that makes you want to keep on going, that you can actually take it and you can handle it and you can go on through life um, with, with that blessing of your father and with that, that saying of your father that I love you, I'm proud of you, I want you to keep going. Um, and so I'm just so happy today to see so many great fathers in this, in this sanctuary, so many people who have poured into my life, coming from a place where my father wasn't around, um, but I had my grandfather and so many great men in this congregation, so many godfathers, um, Uncle Brian, um, um, Deacon Webb, and, and so many others who, who impacted and imparted on my life. Um, and I just want to encourage every man that's in this house today to keep on doing it. You don't know the impact that you're having. You don't know that the lives that you're changing. What you're doing today, the word that you're speaking to, to that young person, that young lady, that young man, um, can, can change their life forever. Um, thinking about Elder Gaines, um, so many things that he had imparted upon me, and so many lessons that I will take for the rest of my life. So keep on doing it. Keep on encouraging to the men of this house. You are, you are great. We, we admonish you this morning. We thank you for the examples that you set, not only for your families, but for this church. And again, I just encourage you to keep on going on. So for Bishop, if you can please stand so we can start presenting to you. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf, 20 minutes. <laughs> on behalf of men, on, on behalf of the shepherd's ministry, um, we just want to give you this token of love and appreciation. Thank you. No Thank problem, you. sir. Praise the Lord, saints. Um, Darnell said it all. <laughs> he said a lot. He said it very well. But we do appreciate our father figures. And um, on this occasion, we're appreciating our pastors. So our first uh, card is for Elder Larry Wayne Matthews. I got the whole government name out. Whole go the whole government name. I had to rail back in my memory to remember. Here you are, Pastor Matthews. We just want you to know how much we appreciate you your work, your labor of love, uh, the broadcast, you're very professional. 
with that. And just the work that you do in the sanctuary. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. And neither are we. So we thank you. God bless you. Secondly, we're here for the big cheesy, I mean, our pastor, our pastor, Bishop Edgar Darnell Robinson. Bishop, we just appreciate you looking pretty sharp today. Keep going. Did you dress up for Father's Day? Looking good, looking good, Bishop. We just want you to know how much we appreciate you, your work, your sacrifice, your labor of love. We know it's not without a cost, um, but you give so freely of yourself, and we just appreciate everything that you do. Hope you have a happy Father's Day. Go to dinner. Do something nice for yourself. <laughs> That's what my mother would say. <laughs> Bless you, Father Bishop. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I follow Donald's lead by doing Pastor Matthews. Pastor Matthews, thank you for your teaching. You teach with such... Uh, excitement, enthusiasm, and, you know, thank you for, you know, making us so excited about the word when the Lord gives you the mic, and we, we do appreciate you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bishop Robinson, I thank you for your commitment and your dependability to the people of God. We appreciate you. Thank you for being there even when sometimes you're not there because we know you're busy and we know you're always thinking about us. you got a lot of children here. We love you in Jesus' name. bless you. Happy Father's Day. We appreciate you being the usher. All that you do, your word, is all that we grandfather and great grandfather. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Praise the Lord, Bishop. God bless you. Thank you. Bishop. Praise the Praise the Lord, Bishop. On behalf of our missionary choir. Praise the Lord. Pastor Matthews, I just want to say that I thank you for your teaching. Your, I mean, the in-depthness of your teaching, I appreciate. Um, if I have a question, I can come to you, but I know that you will come up with an answer. And I appreciate what you do and what you are doing. Continue. To my friend, my bishop, and my pastor, and I have pastor because it's special to me that you are my friend. And I appreciate you because you have been a man of integrity, and I thank God for you being in my life, supporting me in my life, because you have done things that, that I said things. Nobody else has been there, and I appreciate you for all that you do. And this is partly me, my friend, but this is from the ministry of the pastor, and I appreciate you in all that you do. Thank you. Praise the Lord, Bishop Robinson. Um, I don't have a whole lot of words to say, but I just want to say on behalf of Ways and Means Ministry, we love you so dearly as our pastor, as our friend, as our brother, as our confidant, that we can come to you at any given time. You might get on your nerve a little bit sometimes, but I know, yeah, I 
no sugar. You don't sweat the small stuff. And so we greatly, greatly appreciate you as our pastor, as the father of this house. And so happy Father's Day. And to my, my, my buddy right here, this is, this is my, you know, people back in the day used to say my ace coon boom. Pastor Matthews, uh, again, on behalf of the Ways and Means Ministry, we certainly and greatly appreciate you for the things that you do in this house, the things that you do outside of this house, um, that what you walk in is truly exemplified, um, even greater as a father. And so we, from the Ways and Means Ministry, just want to say Happy Father's Day, and we appreciate you. Thank you. And Bishop, on behalf of the men's ministry, amen, we the men of Christ's gospel, we consider Bishop to be a man's man, a man's man. There is not enough time for me to sit here and describe the many, many ways that Bishop just reaches out in so many ways. I, I sat there one day and I just marveled at his, his dedication, his commitment, his going beyond this. And he does stuff that we, we, you, we, we probably will never know because of his dedication, because of his love, and because of how he loves the men. Where are you men? Stand up, men. Come on, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Amen. This is our spiritual father. Come on, clap your hands, somebody. I know the women too, but this for the men, this is our spiritual father, and he really cares about our welfare. So, Bishop, this is not a card. It's just a little something, amen, that we want to give to you to say we love you. Thank God for you. Keep on keeping on. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Boone, I know you got something to say. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Clap your hands for our assistant pastor at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Bishop Robinson, it's hard to really find the right words or all of the words to say thank you to you. Um, you are an impressive person. And part of that deals with the, that there are no levels that are too low for you to associate with or to help or levels that are too high. Um, we see you interact with our babies, and that's interesting because they know people from when they're really little. Praise God. We see them as they come to you and they try to get up here, praise God, in order to be where you are, praise God, where pastor is. We appreciate, um, Pastor Larry said, the man that you are. We appreciate the husband that you are as we watched, praise God, as he's taken care of his wife, praise the Lord. We appreciate, we appreciate that. We appreciate that, that common people feel comfortable around you because you are so, um, praise God, so kind and so loving. We thank God for you, praise God, how you pastored us during the pandemic. We thank God for that. Many churches pray. Many churches closed. Many churches closed. Many churches closed during the pandemic. And yet God used you to continue to pastor us during that pandemic, a time of great fear. And when people were falling and no one knew what to do, you were studying, praise God. You, you were studying. You were just a study, and you were rock solid. And we praise God for that. We praise God because you make whoever comes to church, whether it's us and we're dressed, dressed, or whether we come and we're very comfortable, praise God, you make us all feel good and that we're, 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 it's, oh, it's okay for us to come. We thank you for being the diocesan of the New Jersey District Council. We praise you for being a man among men. We praise you for being a leader. We praise 
you for being on the bishop board of the Pentecostals Assembly of the World. Praise God. We, we praise God that. We praise God because it doesn't matter what time of day or night it is. You do sleep. Praise God. But you are available. We are on your heart. Uh, we thank God again, uh, relating to, praise God, how comfortably we were when we dressed, even doing now. We don't want to get dressed now anymore. We want to be comfortable now. We don't necessarily want to have, uh, praise God, uh, high highfalutin stuff, as they say. And then last Sunday, you break up in here all dressed up. Did y'all see him break? You, did y'all know if you saw him or not? But he came in here and he looked and you were like, wow, Bishop, he does have something else to wear. And then he said, then he said a couple of weeks ago, he, I don't know if you were in here when he had the suit on. When he had the suit on and say, it said to the syringe of Sister Robinson that he got it from the thrift store. How many people are comfortable being themselves? How many people are comfortable in their own skin? Because it's critical for us to be comfortable in our own skin so that we're able to be who God has called us to be. Angie, I know it ain't Father's Day, but it was happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. We love you. Come on, include a happy birthday. This girl's a workaholic. She, she never stops, praise God. We thank God for you. We don't take it for granted that what you do, and so we thank God for you. Bishop Robinson, we do love you. We admire you. We respect you. We thank God for the vision you have. We thank God for being a visionary. We thank God for pouring into our brothers, our fathers, and letting them know that they can be the men that God wants them to be. We pray for you. Bishop, we pray for you. Bishop Robinson, we pray for you that God will keep you, that he will strengthen you, that he will continue to share his vision with you so that you can continue to share his vision with us. God bless you. We love you, sir. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, sing it, happy birthday dear Angie, happy birthday to you, come on clap your hands. <laughs> 